This is the last episode of Season 1. The Masses Podcast is currently taping for all new episodes for Season 2. But then when you identify with the pain, and it's not, it, you don't move on past your pain, bro. Victim mindset, and then it turns into... It turns v- into that. Yeah, it's The victim, identity of the victim. Victim mindset, and also to a certain extent, pain Olympics. Like, who's the most hurt? It turns into right because then identity is turned into a social a social hierarchy. The, like the so it's like everything becomes upside down. Like strength is no longer the virtue, and now pain becomes the virtue. Yeah, and I think as a society we need to break that paradigm and heal the pain and move on from the pain to reverse the polarity and bring back strength. Uh, we all have to say this now, okay? Uh, you may not like it, but that's what we're going to say. I'm with her, okay? Repeat after me. <laughs> I'm with her. Mm-hmm. I... <laughs> that's one. <laughs> right? That's what we got to do here. We got, you know, so that's culture, right? It's agreeable lies for the most part. And uh, so if you're caught in the, in the agreeable lie, right, whether you're hypnotized or you're just scared and you're complying and you're conformist via fem- male feminist cuck, mm-hmm. right? Drinking bath water. Wow. D <laughs> drinking that. Wow. D <laughs> <laughs> Hitler would not have killed you. Like, <laughs> You survive, yeah, you would have survived the Holocaust and um, all the doors open for you. Because me and you would be gone if Hitler won. I mean, you'd be gone. You would be gone too? Stop! No, I would not. I, I'd say, oh, I see hell. Seek hell. Why are you throwing up gang signs? <laughs> Bro, Hitler coming at the gates? I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, see, hail my brother. And then he like, would never reach me. And he'd be like, all right, do sin. <laughs> he would never make it to Haiti because he would forget that it's a place. I'd be fine. <laughs> and too much sunburn. Exactly. Hitler <laughs> would make it in Haiti and go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, yeah. <laughs> We live in a time where everything is easy, so you don't think that's going to change you? You you have access to seeing more women online than you ever have, than, than one man has ever had the opportunity in multiple lives. Sure. Forget 70 years. I don't think you could watch... I, I don't think you could see naked women in 70 years of due diligence. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Uh, Maybe like, I don't know. The only, the only guy who's ever done is Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan's seen a lot of cheeks. (laughs) All right. Uh, of every palette. I've taken over your country. Let me see the, let me see them yams. (laughs) Let me see them cheeks. Yeah, he's the only living dude probably who's seen as many cheeks as a modern day dude who uh, has seen online. But even then, just thinking about that with the difference of those people, it says everything you need to know. Because sure. If you can see the same amount as Genghis Khan, the baddest dude on the planet. And you aren't the baddest dude on the face of the planet. And you got arms like that. Yeah, exactly. Look, I don't got Genghis Khan arms. (laughs) That's fair. I know I don't. (laughs) I don't have conquistador arms. (laughs) But I think that stuff changes you. And the fact that, you know, you are one of the many dudes who use hypergamy apps, that changes you too. Um, You know, women smell weakness. And I think guys who use online dating are personally weak. I, I think it's okay for the alpha to pick up a couple of fish that are swimming downstream. And he's just like, oh, you made it too easy. Nah, spear and stab a couple so, so out of the, boredom. This was a person who I 
like 98% of my life is in person. It's not hypergamy apps. Then why are you afraid of approaching women in person? It's not a matter a of afraid. It's not a matter of afraid of approaching people. That's not what it is. It's just Okay. So the well, second that we It's not a fear, but at the same time you approach more women online than in person. Not true. I highly doubt that. I highly doubt you your approach, doubt. You you approach 10 to 20 women a day as compared to the probably 30 or 40 swipes. Them swipes it's on easy, auto bro. swipes. Like, That's the problem. Different. That's no, my no, point. No, 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 my no. My point is is it's too Bullshit. easy. Bullshit. Get the fu- uh, I mean, so yes there are swipes at the end of the night when i'm bored and i everyone swipes when they're bored anyway um no i i i still do stuff in person because i prefer not as much as online and that's what i'm saying It, it makes you soft i don't think so i think it's a state of mind as your voice goes up well, I don't think so. I don't think so. It's oh a stadium. Oh. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't think so. It's as a state of mind. As you sound like Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's, it's a state of mind kind of thing. Disney what? Plus is the one that grooms. <laughs> See people messed up. It's not Disney. It's Disney Plus. <laughs> When you get plus, on that, plus. when you get on that Disney Plus, your kid <laughs> gonna be sus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, legit, legit. <laughs> Don't look at that dust cloud. <laughs> Watch out for them dosekis. <laughs> Watch out for that dust cloud, bro. Nah, but for like, I look at the top of that castle. Some you, weird you want shapes. Them pyres. There's something up with a little suspicious. Don't get them, them spires. Pyre. Them spires look at. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that's Disney Plus Plus. This is Disney Plus Plus. That's the exclusive subscription that they yeah. don't tell you about. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No. It's it's not like. Being on hypergamy 100% negates my ability to do the thing that I do. I've always done the thing that I do. It's so Which it, is what? Talk to women and about what their lives are like and get to know them? No, sir. I close. Thank you very much. <laughs> I ain't no damn pudding person. <laughs> I don't pudding. Nah, close. I don't know, man. I, I would have to see it to believe it. You've seen the results of it many times. I've never what seen are you, you talking close. about? I've never seen you close. Because you've never been in an environment where I've closed in your face, but you've always seen the fruits of my closing. What does that mean? I've seen the fruits of your closing. You've seen the women I've been with. You've only been with like two women. That's not true, but the- you've only seen two because... <laughs> I've only seen two, yes. Correct. So <laughs> Because we went ghost for a while. Stop. So for a year or two, you closed all the women in your life in that small span. Keep on going. All right. This, isn't, this is not really clearing out to be a true story. I've only seen you with two women, so in my book, you've only closed two. <laughs> so when I see you close another one, I'll be like, damn, you got three, bro. <laughs> Every guy's book is a tally. So in my tally, you've only had two, okay? Everything else is what you said, which is uh, unbelievable. So first off, two. Use a female dog. First off, use a female dog. Second off, use a female dog. Third off. Well, I think you're, I mean, female dogs are probably doing it more than you are. You you got the uno and dos. 
So what other uh, imaginary women uh, have you had? <laughs> You've only had two, bro. Now your whole life. I think you had three in your whole life, right? What was the first one? Who's the first school you were with? I won't fight you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to count. So the first girl you were with. Church, first right. off. First off. Well, that wasn't the same as the first second. First off. Well, she, was you, it the same you try, girl? You trying to get my body count on a damn podcast? Let's do it. Let's go there. Uncensored. Fine. So body the count. first girl you were body with. Body count. Bro, my body count's like. You lost your. Virgin. 11. You lost your V to uh, who? dead ass bro I, so, <laughs> so, so again so, another so, mystery girl who may or may not exist she does exist I really just disavow her because but like you know who was she like demographic it was some white girl what you I told you I retired first. I retired from white girls for a reason except that his second girlfriend was a white girl too correct so he's lying after after no, I didn't retire then I retired after her. That's what happened. Damn, and, I didn't and, even know that you lost your virginity to uh, your first girlfriend was a white girl. Uh -huh. But was she your girlfriend or just like a one night thing? One night thing. Damn, that's sad. Yeah, it was. My first girlfriend was a, yeah, I was in a committed relationship with. Nah, so so I could have done it earlier, like in the fifth grade, but I don't. I didn't even have the heme iron yet. <laughs> I was like just percolating. You know what I mean? That was the the summer of love. I. So. She went to high school with you. No college. I I decided to. Was not, she Jewish? No. Redhead. Redhead. Yes. Yeah, she Jewish. No. She's definitely Jewish. No. He lied. Maybe. Yeah. She I probably was. See? That's what you call psychic downloads. <laughs> I knew it, she was redheaded. It, it, yeah, for sure. And you never even told me that. Look, we already have the Bluetooth, so I don't care. <laughs> like, you're acting as if this is going to freak me out. It's not because, yo, we've been around each other for way too many, like, way too many years, and we... We already Yo, legitimately um, we talked the talk, so we got we definitely need to segue next to this wild thing I saw on the internet, bro, and it's related to this topic. All right, go okay. Um, so there, there's this Instagram account that came up on my feed, suggested feed. I, I saw, I was like, let me bite, yoink, snatched it up on my feed. I'm watching it and it's basically an entire account, right, of this girl and her relationship. But he's like Stephen Hawking out. Oh, he's he's hawking all right. <laughs> like and uh, you know, no offense. No, you know, I'm not that's not a joke. No, 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 no. I'm that's... just saying he if there's a, a level from like, you know, uh no leg to oh, Hawking. I, I've got no legs. <laughs> I got no I legs. Got no legs. <laughs> if it's from I got no legs to Stephen Hawking, that dude was Stephen Hawking. All right. He, he had the IBM Genetic. computer talking for him. He could talk a little bit, but um, I think this is worse than Stephen Hawking because Stephen Hawking had a he was a full size adult male. Correct. Okay, so this guy must have had a similar um, genetic disorder. But his legs, he was definitely like probably at the height of a seven-year-old. Sheesh. So I want to say he was maybe max this tall. Like that. Sheesh. In a wheelchair for life. He could talk. Sure. Um, but, you know, and his arms were thinner than yours. Like... By 10 times thinner than you. Uh, I, I was about to say, I don't like my arms being the bar for thin arms. <laughs> it's not the bar. <laughs> Yours is like average. <laughs> Yours is average. So go 10 times below average. So that's a huge amount. Sure. I, I couldn't start with me because I got tree trunks. <laughs> <laughs> that's like going down to average. So it's below average by 10 times. So very, very like malnourished looking. He bagged a, 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 a baddie. 
I mean, she was a baddie. I, you know, I wouldn't say she was a 10. She's definitely like not a 7. Sure. And I don't even think she was an 8 because she's fit too. I know, I know that sounds super superficial, but <laughs> they're in a committed uh, <laughs> marriage and they've, uh, <laughs> they've known each other apparently since they were kids. So that's a that's a little bit of a component, right? They're they're blonde. <laughs> she's like a beautiful blonde, maybe like a nine. And then I found out from all the comment section that this guy is loaded. <laughs> that's it. Is this a little suspect, or am I just being mean? I think she's waiting for that life insurance. Because <laughs> <laughs> the dude like that, how much? How many years does Hawkins had? His life was cut off short, right? Well. Hawkins happened to live for a decent amount of time. Like I'm that. sure, like this dude too, he's gonna live for a little bit. Yeah, above like, average. Like, because like for he's for a millionaire. Sure, for sure, like sixty, seventy. If he's he, lucky, he has time. Right. If he if he's lucky, I th- I I think for the most part, cats like that have time simply because they're under consistent supervision, like consistent medical supervision. So they're gonna live for some time. This is this isn't like something where it's a quick ticket to to your bank ever. Yeah, the y- comment y- section was really really coming at them from all angles. Because <laughs> I mean, so there's tons and tons and tons of produced videos that she posts uh, with them and reassuring everybody that they're in love, that this isn't her using him. I but. don't believe her because she don't get the damn stick. How is she going to get the stick? Yo, but all right. So let's address that there. You know, that's like every other question. It's like, oh, oh this is so cute. Oh, you're so brave. Does he even put down the pipe? That's like she the fifth don't question. Get, she, she don't get the, she don't get the stick. But they How? address that. In a video. <laughs> and he was like, I would just like to let you guys know I all my bodily functions are uh completely fine. Yo, but homie, here's the thing. There's way more to that act than her being on top. She would kind of have to use him as like she's a, a dildo. Like, yeah, he's a tool. He's yeah. a tool. Yeah. Stop. So once again, I mean, and stress. Look, you can rub one out. She so, can rub one out on him. Yeah. You know she, what I mean? She, she, she can rub one out on him and she can ride him. That's it. Other than that. But that's maybe, you know, hypothetically, what if that's enough? If she, you know, if she, let's say legitimately. Then she she's lame. Because here's the thing, bro. Like, <laughs> look. Yes, all those other things are valid. Don't get me wrong. Yes, but yo, like, what's what else is there Mm. than a dude being on top, asserting his thing, and asserting his thing, and, and inserting his thing, asserting his thing, and inserting his thing. You know what I mean? Like there's I w- I would follow that, but I think we're also in a new paradigm where I think women, you know, have fully convinced themselves in the culture that they don't need that. You know, they need a sensitive, you know, kind of dude. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I could no. like if you said that if you said that in the early 2000s and the 90s, I would have been like Full stop. Yes, but today, I could I could actually see that there would be some women who are so feminine, feminine, uh, feminism, feminized, or, or not even. No, there's no such thing as a woman being too fe- feminized. Fe- feministist, feministic, <laughs> making up feminism. Words. Yes, too sure. much. Who's been so like brainwashed by feminism uh, that she could convince herself that this is like a progressive relationship. And I think that's what you're seeing here because her rationale is like, you know, constantly saying like, it's a little bit stereotypical to say, um, um, can my man protect me and this and that show she's interjecting feminist feminism as like this defense mechanism when people are like pressing her. 
And then, you know, people in the comments are like, yo, well, why can't you just let them be happy? And people are like, no, she, they are public. She is public publicizing the, every part of their life. So as the public square, we are allowed to have questions. Sure. Otherwise, keep that <laughs> stuff to yourself. Right? That's fair. Keep it to yourself. If... You don't want people to ask normal questions. You're you're uh, you're airing your life for millions of people. Right. I mean, you know honest, I mean? honestly, it, at, at the juncture, way too much. I would never. Why would why it, would you? Like, it's really fascinating. Make any sense. I, I, well, like, like why she even went in this direction correct, in her life. Correct. It, it's very weird. Very strange. Very very weird. You know, How shallow are you where this is the most interesting part of you? I don't think it's about being shallow. I, maybe it's like the all consuming mother. Cause like, you know, she basically, he's basically a toddler to her. Exactly. She, she actually, sure. she, there's, there's a video, yes, there's a right. video that she uh, lifts him into bed. Okay. Cause he's only this tall. Right. He's like a, I mean, I'm a sure, six, I'm sure seven she, year old. I'm sure she inside. drops her and I'm sure he dro she drops him into the damn bathtub. She has to. He can't. Exactly. Yeah, he can't do that. So, so that's that's not your dude. That's your baby. That's I, your that's your baby that you happen to ride, <laughs> and that's disgusting. Um, I'm sure people would say that's not cool to say. You know, uh, I don't care. I'm saying it. <laughs> so you don't think disabled people deserve love, Charles? Is that's, that what you're saying? That's absolutely not the case. Well, he's, first, he's receiving love, and you think that's disgusting? No, I just think that she's nefarious because she's social mediaing about it. Right. So you think? I mean, that's to me that is definitely one aspect of the wrong, uh, and maybe not even wrong, but it's like question. There's, a, it's like a little, a little like there, what's your motives? There, there, there's, you, there's you, certain you, you're things. showing everybody else exactly. how great you are. By it's, taking care of a, a again, paralyzed man. We're virtue signaling. But this may this. be the biggest virtue signal of all time. It's of deep. All it's deep. All time. If, 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 if you're taking care of someone and <laughs> also boning them and you're talking married about. Married to. She's married to the dude. Let's married. Go. Married on top of that. And. Yeah, social post about all that, Joan. Twenty, dude. That's all it is. Twenty four seven. I like. It's all about her, her relationship to him, how great of this that's marriage is. This is like she's constantly reassuring us, but I, I, I know it. Def it almost defies every level of hypergamy. So this is the last part of it before I wrap it is they also said that they wanted to have kids. How? So, so that's the part where, <laughs> you know, when she said that, uh, he said that his parts are fully functioning, by the way, wink, 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 wink. Yeah. And they, and they giggle together. Um, yeah, they, they, I mean, I don't know if that the, his issue is, could be, you know, affect them, uh, their children, but they could be potentially bringing in children who have a predisposition to the same exact disorder. Of course. I mean, look, that's, that's wrong, man. We're, we're talking about Punnett squares, right? We're, we're, let's bring, mean? let's bring it back to damn high school biology. You know, when you like did those squares of mm. four and it was like, all right, so you have trait a and trait B and the kids or the progeny is going to look like this. And there was a 25% chance, at, at least with a simple pundit square, where you see the download of what they look like or what their genetic chromosomal download will look like. If someone is a hybrid or at least or like regardless of someone is dominant trait or recessive trait and they're homozygous or heterozygous you know like trait and non-trait or trait and trait so 
this guy may be one of the two. But at the end of the day, the fact that he will have progeny means that his children will either be 50% carriers of this trait or 25% carriers of this trait. There is no way to slice it any different. The fact is, is that he's going to come out in a wheelchair. <laughs> there is a very good. Dream th- home, dream. <laughs> what, what, what? Back to life. <laughs> dream show, dream, dream show. <laughs> Coming out rolling. Right. Like, find, like, find me rolling. There, there, there is, there is a find me rolling. <laughs> they see me rolling. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, at the minimum, at the minimum, yeah. No, twenty five. Yeah, I would say twenty five is generous, generous too, for a condition like that, bro. Wild. That could be a dominant trait. Wild, wild. That's kind of sus. I mean, he must be. He must have Thor's hammer, bro. He's got to he's got to I mean, compensate somewhere. Right? So so this I'm thinking dude he's got this, a tree this trunk. Dude, this dude's got that piston. <laughs> he's got he's that got that pistola. He's got, he's got that Detroit piston, boy. This guy is <laughs> <laughs> This guy is definitely packing. NBA edition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Point. He's definitely packing Thor's hammer, bro. There they ain't no other way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not to mention and i don't know if the comments are, are rumors but everyone's like yo he he actually wealthy you know that right and it looks like where they live like there has to be because their home why would you looking beautiful too if we're so. talking about hypergamy and all that john this is the weirdest Ooh. hypergamy story of all time this is the weirdest <laughs> virtue signaling story of all time. That, that, this like, is the like, weirdest. Yo, th- let's take care of it in one fell swoop. Let's talk about the, like, how how convenient is this where you can hypergamy and virtue signal, virtue signal at the same time and look like a freaking savior. Right. So at- that's an added bonus. Like, that makes you... Like, you could honestly, they'll probably have a TED Talk for you lined up. She can go on it tomorrow, bro. Yeah, exactly. She How walk do you in. love someone who's disabled? I don't know. Jump on his dick. <laughs> <laughs> Jump. That's it. That's all we got. What are you doing? What are you bringing to him other than the fact that he never thought? No, what is he bringing to you? Oh, he's bringing stuff to you. Apparently. I mean... A relationship. That's a big thing. People identify themselves with that. Some people are their relationships, bro. Yeah. I mean, I want to believe, but I don't, I, I don't know, man. It's very hard to believe. You know what I mean? Like, I could understand if she was average looking. All right. Right. That's the part. Like, if you were average, like, if you were average, a woman, you're five or six, I would be like, Hey man, different different folks, different 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 wheelie poppy wheelie strokes. Okay, <laughs> but if you were eight nine, and let I me mean, super fit, like you know what I mean, got mm-hmm. a body, got what? a face, sure, but blonde hair, blue eyed, so that means you got that advantage. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're pretty Hitler much would, the, Hitler would not have killed you. Like <laughs> you survive, yeah, you would have survived the Holocaust and. Um, all the doors open for you. Because me and you would be gone if Hitler won. I mean, you'd be gone. You would be gone too. Stop. No, no I would not. I, I'd say, oh, I see hell. See hell. Why are you throwing up gang signs? <laughs> Bro, Hitler coming at the gates. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, see, hail my brother. And then he like, would never reach me. He'd be like, all right, do sin. <laughs> <laughs> he would never make it to Haiti because he would forget that it's a place. I'd be fine. <laughs> and too much sunburn. Exactly. <laughs> Hitler would make it in Haiti and go, ah! <laughs> 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 but anyway. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no. bro. The, the, Dude, the story this, is that, that's, wild, that, man. That's absolute. At least in my brain, I can't see a scenario where that's not the pinnacle of virtue signaling. But and do you think she's playing the long game for the bag? Yeah, she's playing the long game for the bag. She's trying but to get what, that what? life insurance, bro. She's right. trying to get the Aflac. Right. So that so if they do have kids and they're potentially also disabled, then she's basically got I don't think endless she, hypergamy, like financial resources. And granted, I don't think she thought that far. Like I don't think that she did. Nah, no, pl- apparently, like on, uh, she she definitely wanted kids. Yeah, she, but I don't she think actually so. asked him when they were younger. Like, can you still like produce offspring? Quote unquote. Yeah, he can produce offspring, but I don't know about them offspring though. I don't know but if don't you want to dip it, into know, that pool. I don't know. If she did them punted squares. I don't know whether she did AP bio or not. Like <laughs> something's in that water, bro. I don't yeah, know if you want no, to dip into that nah, well. No, nah, no, nah. Because we're talking about at the worst case scenario, that's fifty percent. <laughs> <laughs> Did yeah, you think know. about it? That's fifty percent. Well, apparently she wanted offspring with him from the get go. Because she don't want offspring. She's hoping that they fucking die. <laughs> yeah. Wild. Wild, man. I'm flabbergasted. My my flabbers are gasted. Flabs be gas. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, Mina trusts that woman. Mina trusts. Yeah, man. At all. Sounds like a narcissist. That sounds really high key sus. Like, yeah. Let me let me get all this clout. And, and and pain pornography, right? The pain pornography. And let me get all this clout and think about how many brand sponsorships and donations that she could get off that. You the, know what I mean? The part that really, really twists all of this is the social media presence. Like, damn, bro, she could never get her back thrown out. Like, no one's ever tapping that, like, to break her back no one i mean no there there are some some other dudes there there are some some dudes out there absolutely would because it's like i'm saying she's never getting her back broken oh she will never get her back broken ever in her life she unless she's uh you know secretly which she probably is she will probably get impregnated by another dude come back to homeboy and tell him that it's his and it's going to be a healthy baby oh, boy. And make him pay for everything because mm-hmm. he's got the money. Because so it, true. Healthy baby boy coming into his life. If she happens to pick some, <laughs> she just not some pull, donor. She just better not do you because then that baby come oh, out. Oh, that's going to be quite obvious. When that baby comes out caramel with fluffy hair. <laughs> 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 Yo, Have you when, ever seen photos? When, when the- that baby comes out, Ty, you know, <laughs> yeah. there's going to be a problem. <laughs> Get to pasa, daddy. This my baby. Orale, mami. This my. This my. Yeah. That's gonna be the story of the year. <laughs> Posing for photos with nappy-headed babies. <laughs> this is my son. <laughs> this is you from made this. the womb, dancing to bachata. <laughs> that recessive gene. You know what I mean? Like, you don't worry about it. It's, that... it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's never. It's a recessive gene. Don't do that. This is science. No. But absolutely. That man's gonna get catfish babied. Yo, maybe he should have maybe he should have read Maybe he should have read um Rollo's book. Rollo Tomasi. <laughs> Bro, you just got read, got Yo, read the damn rational male <laughs> and get some knowledge in your life, bro. That's for any, any dude. Any. I really think that you're getting got. <laughs> and you just don't know it. Yeah. She, so fix she, your life. He's marked. He's been, his life insurance got marked. It's got two <laughs> names on it, bro. Bro, you getting got. <laughs> like, 
I, I don't know what else to tell you. I, I literally. I mean, I kind of. I don't blame him. If some hot blonde, and I was in, I was in his state. <laughs> I've got no legs. <laughs> if I had no legs, and, and a nine was throwing that dun 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 around that's fine that's hard i mean look man can you blame him that's hard no, bro I, I don't blame him that's not no yeah that's not the problem i think we could all empathize with that no the if the, you if you can't even if you gotta get you you gotta you gotta get. <laughs> hey baby <laughs> Like that dude from Family Guy. Mm, exactly. You do, yeah. You're Joe Swanson in this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're Joe Swanson in this. If you're Joe Swansoning <laughs> and you get yourself a nine, I ain't mad at what you. What man could honestly fight that? So we definitely understand. But man. But I truly man. think you're getting got, bro. <laughs> like <laughs> your life insurance is definitely the target. And Ah, mm, ah, mm, mm, ah. If you were my dad, I'd beat you every day. <laughs> That's not how that works. It works this way today. <laughs> Dude, you're, you're not even making varsity. I'm if a- you're making varsity, then I'd be like, right. that dad'd be like, what? Well, you better go to your room. And then the son looks at him like this and be like, what? At a reasonable time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a good night now. Walks off. Hit him with that John Morant. Exactly. You, you're not even making varsity, bro. I beat you. I beat your behind every night. I whip you into shape, but I ain't your daddy. Cause ain't no one out of shape. Behind. And if I was your daddy, you'd be in shape. Whip you. There w- with my thickest belt. The, the good thi- one. <laughs> the genuine leather. <laughs> <laughs> the dress belt. Yeah, I mean that's kind of respectful. If you beat your kid with the genuine leather, right? Espe- especially like that's that's respectful. If you go out of your way and take out the brown belt, <laughs> and you take out the brown belt, the evening belt. Yeah, so so oh. that so that you beat your brown child with the brown belt, so hey. that you coordinate <laughs> more more fodder for the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> but you know, the second that you bring out the cloth belt, you know that that ain't a real dad. Uh, you bring it out like the boating belts. That's like, that's like a dad who's mixed race. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got a little Irish, so you know a little Irish Italian, but it's a little bit of that Jamaican. Get over here, Cody. Mm-mm. You lost already. I'm going to hit you with my cloth belt. <laughs> Don't even make a satisfying sound when it connects. It doesn't have any snap. There's no there's no snap to it. It's just like Mm-mm. That ain't no belt to be hidden with. Get it out of here. First off, belts are basic. You got to get on your West Indian and break out the hangers with people with hangers my mom broke a wooden hanger over my head you should have done more thanks i mean it would have helped you don't think so i think it would have helped (laughs) i mean at least she didn't like put spices in your eyes that's torture the the most popular Haitian punishment is you, you sprinkle rice on the floor mm-hmm. and have you kneel in it for like time. Trust me, it's torture. Like stand on it? Kneel. So you're, you're on your knees in the rice for like 30 minutes to an hour. That's torture. I mean, you guys learned it from someone. 
Hack. Francis. <laughs> That's why you guys are so good at that. We learned it from some colonizers. You're like, you know what? The conquistadors. Yeah, these conquistadors know what they're doing. <laughs> they they knew how to torture us. Let's do it to our kids. Yeah, you know, <laughs> let's water it down a little bit. Like, we'll prevent death, but, you know, till death. That is a horrible plight. Like, bro. And, and it don't leave no bruises. It's just. That's why you are the way you are. You got that rice torture, bro. <laughs> If other people survive rice torture, they're not going to be the same. <laughs> so, <laughs> rice torture, jail, and my dad drew my, like drove my head through a wall. I'm doing great because you you weren't making varsity. That's why he did it. He I was, was mad. And you were soft. I was making all state orchestra. <laughs> That's exactly why he did it. So you better get you you. you waste of blackness get through that wall you're but, supposed to be getting us that iv league wasting blackness no i tiene sabor so i still am representing quite well just don't you you can't represent nothing with orchestra you're an embarrassment to your people i ain't representing orchestra no yeah, more i'm representing jazz band bro ain't no haitians out there claiming your orchestra I, that's why i'm not <laughs> claiming an orchestra my damn self you're an embarrassment to haiti bro. Yeah. look at like, you it'd be like you are i know i'm not a doctor engineer right <laughs> that's I know what i'm that. saying exactly <laughs> i'm like stop <laughs> I know. <laughs> Look at the mirror. <laughs> exactly. That's, you we're both an embarrassment to our people. Right, because I am not a varsity player and I'm not a doctor or an engineer. I'm just messing up. Nah, that's not a thing expected of black people. You're supposed to be an athlete. For Haitians, it's different. What do Haitians do? Sell cell Doctors phones? Doctors and engineers. Nah, you guys are selling cricket. I promise cricket you. Cricket plans. Cricket? Yeah. <laughs> phone plan. <laughs> You don't know cricket? No. Exactly. No. Y'all are selling cricket and T-Mobile. Excuse and you. And Metro PCS. That's Bangladeshis. Nah. <laughs> you guys got it in too. And the Bengalis too. <laughs> <laughs> the competitors. <laughs> nah, that's not really Haiti. I'm thinking Nigerian. Right. That's what I'm Nigerian saying. Nigerian cats are out there in tech like that. The double standard is existent like it, it's kind of interesting to see some of these conservative feminists punch down at the liberal feminist or con conservative yeah, that's right that's right. right like just call them both feminists because it is yeah right ultimately gynocentric point blank because yeah, y'all are on different sides of the spectrum, but ultimately they converge at a point because you're still benefiting off of the exact same privilege that was begotten by the liberal feminists of yesteryear. And even furthermore, um, has been kind of like really, really polarized, you know, men and women and to the benefit of women like in a one-sided way so? you know, by new wave feminist, I would say they benefit from even that more so because sure. sure may all women benefit greatly from first wave feminists, but the latest wave of feminists are, have called for basically having women replicate men. And that is somehow supposed to be the height of womanhood and reject all female things because those those are seen as regressive right raising a family and ha you know bringing all the people on earth into this world eh i could get a babysitter for that afterthought i can get a babysitter for that and i walk out in my pantsuit <laughs> exactly which is like you know look i understand nothing is clear cut things are always complex and nuanced <laughs> the frogs are gay <laughs> 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 They're turning frogs gay. 
I'm, I'm mad that that's the segue. The frogs. <laughs> the frogs. Gay. It's in the water. <laughs> it's the pollution. Turning the frogs gay. Okay. Yeah. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Your white cliff is horrible. <laughs> My throat's dry. I'll <laughs> If I was president for a day, someone please call nine one one. See, why clef so good made you naked. <laughs> so we were talking about earlier with just we're in this like interesting era where I think I've always said that we're not cognizant of how female nature is really persistently available to the eyes if you are aware and once you become aware to the the patterns uh because really right the biggest difference i think besides our sexual dimorphism is our temperament the male sure. female temperament is the like men and women are mostly the same, they say, right? But the ways in which we are different are so different that that's what makes us complete each other. We, you know, the yin and yang. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's like women are human and men are human. Sure. So we're the same. Yes. <laughs> but in the ways that we're different, we're men and women. That is significant. Very. And I think that that type of like... It's, it's not a contradiction, but that duality is it's, it's present in the cosmos, right? That inherent, like the sun, that that's a bomb. That's a bomb in the sky, <laughs> but you know what? Without it, you're dead. Mm -hmm. You need that bomb. Constantly. Yo, big every, bomb. Every day, nuclear explosion. <laughs> like for millions of years it's so volatile it's like how has this not killed everything and it will one day <laughs> doubt that the sun's gonna boom eventually and then that theory will change after that dude's dead <laughs> so it's that's a theory let's pause the theories for now you're acting as if red dwarf stars and like we haven't seen things play out. Calm down, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Calm down. <laughs> the cosmos. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know you were a physicist. Now, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. I went to the most prestigious. <laughs> I got the award in the country, and I also just won the most prestigious award in the country to pursue research at any institution I want. I the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship. So I think I'm pretty, you know, qualified to say that most of what you're saying is based on like old data. <laughs> I am the most qualified person ever. I won an award. <laughs> I, I won an award for physics, and so the I longest. know biology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, I didn't. I'm sorry to offend you. My music degree means that I have authority to tell you what's good about the sun. <laughs> but that duality exists in every part of the cosmos in nature right um and in, it's it exists within the polarity of male and female mm -hmm. so seeing the like the temperamental differences the psychological temperamental differences it really opens you up into reality because that's a part of our reality that we uh kind of suppress sure. it goes below the threshold uh, under what culture culture is the surface we use culture to solve complex problems some of it is like magic spells right words agreements you're right <laughs> sometimes mm -hmm. like hey you know uh we all have to say this now okay uh you may not like it but that's what we're gonna say i'm with her okay repeat after me <laughs> i'm with her mm -hmm. I Subliminal <laughs> plum. That's one. <laughs> right? That's what we got to do here. We got, you know, so that's culture, right? It's agreeable lies for the most part. And uh, so if you're caught in the, in the agreeable lie, 
right? Whether you're hypnotized or you're just scared and you're complying and you're conformist via fem- male feminist cuck, mm-hmm. right? Drinking bath water. Wow, D. <laughs> Drinking that wow, D. <laughs> <laughs> You drinking that wow D from an e-gamer. If you, yeah. So uh, et cetera, right. If you're caught in the cultural lies of the time, sure. Yeah. You will suppress, you will rationalize very observable psychological phenomena. So what I do and what I recommend for everybody, I've done my whole life and I know you have is you educate yourself on the data uh, and and the information, the information and the data and all all the sciences that underpin or at least attempt to define the underpinnings of reality, Right. right? Whether it's philosophy, psychology, art, even art has a way of like invoking these like kind of primordial images of man. Sure. If you do those things, you will, and, and you're not in the cultural lies, Oh my God. Right. It's, Especially if it's you, a little terrifying because you, you start to see like what is what, and people are saying I'm with her. People are saying that's one. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, whatever it is, whatever lie it could be tomorrow. Uh, Rachel Dallas says just as black, I guess that's acceptable. now. <laughs> it's okay. She's, you can do that. God, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> is this the new thing now? God, it's fun. I am a man. I am a You know, so if you, you know what I mean? You, know, you, you start to see the underpinnings of it all. And I need to focus on gender right there because um, you start to see in the ways that female thought are changing our culture. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a kick it back to you. Cause I, I, car- I with the forearm, bro, not even with anything <laughs> else. Just right here. I, I got you <laughs> right here. You have to use the forearm. You, the forearm. you have to use the grab forearm. That, grab it. <laughs> <laughs> I got you with the cuppage. So, <laughs> you start to see, you know what I mean? Like female thought, right? And because primordially, we always want to protect women. Like women, we know like women are not as strong as men. Like it's, it's, we don't need to say it. It is so baked into the basic foundation of our core. From birth. It, from birth. And we know that women are vulnerable as, right? As, as, as that, uh, the 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 component in nature that has evolutionarily designed them and to be a certain way and to have certain chemical uh you know and phys- physiological Physi- yeah. and physical and biological everything the entire pyramid of freaking reality of what woman means okay so it's in our nature and that exact nature is used through culture to have political achievements. Sure. It's that system of, of culture is used to maybe manipulate that and position women in a certain way in society where they can more than succeed. They can have certain baseline uh, accesses and privileges and demands on others that are not equal and put on men because sure. that we've put women in charge and women look out for women. Right. And so you start to see those ways in the ways they manifest. And I'll really, I'll end my point with bringing up Jada because Jada is the epitome of this <laughs> phenomenon. <laughs> you know, you see, right. And, and, and Amber Heard, Amber Heard and Jada Pinkett Smith, which I feel like you're really into celebrity and culture. I don't think I've ever seen someone in public be as toxic (laughs) as Jada Pinkett has been towards Will. And, and mentioned what's not only is she toxic, but 
the complicity of our society. Sure. That's the second most important component. So, you know, Will is a wholesome human being. He's, he is not a man of drama Humble. at all. No. Point blank. He's just not a man of drama ever. And at, at best, Jada is moderately successful on her own, agnostic of anything involving her family or anything like that. In fact, probably the best thing that she's had is being in that family. I think that's kept her relevant. That and the Matrix. <laughs> that's really about it. And how long ago was that? But literally, the, the fact that that you can't go a day without hearing the Smiths in the news cycle is all because of her narrative. She's, she's been dragging, she's been dragging Will Smith on the tarmac face first for years. And it's right. The one, do you know roughly when this phenomena started? Was this, it wasn't in the nineties. No, no, no. This, so this is, is like this 2000s. Is fairly, yeah, this is fairly recent, actually, where things like really start to get strange. I mean, mm -hmm. granted, the family structure has always been strange. Like, um, Jaden... You know, strange for celebrities or strange for us. A bit of both. Because both of their children emancipated themselves from their parents... Was that after? Um, before. Before everything. The public. I mean, that makes sense. You know, the if their children emancipated themselves and then all of this toxicity is coming out publicly. Right. I mean, what, what happens in the shadows, right? It takes time to. Correct. For things to break down. I think they were broken already because so both of their children emancipated themselves. Both of the children are babies. Mm -hmm. Like. Something's not checking out. Right. Something about the family structure is not working. Yeah. I think it's very, it's very publicly, they've been having trouble. Right. And what was it? Like last year, she had that very public affair with someone who's like her son's age. I think that was probably the point in which... That's when things really broke down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're when you're you're in a point where like was someone's being held hostage in a relationship to tolerate the most um I think the most uh unforgivable acts, right? We we consider acts when you're in a monogamous relationship and it, you know and and I know some people this has happened to, you know, sure. I've heard of that they were in a monogamous relationship for 10 years, 20 years, and then one wanted to uh, be polygamous and that uh, they basically had to and stuff down all those emotions and cry every night. Will is held hostage. And uh, this is, seems to be one of those situations. So she has this, uh, she, she, she has this triste with someone half right. her age exactly very publicly and she talks about it proudly right and then puts and then puts will on camera and talks to him about it on her podcast right so and, and explain how she goes about justifying it because she does I, I know i've seen her in round circles with other women correct and right and what, are, like what do those women discussion? say when she says that and you know what are her explanations her explanations have kind of morphed over time because recently she's actually come out on the exact same podcast recently after this whole Oscars debacle and things like that, where she just said, yeah, I shouldn't have gotten married to Will ever. Like that was a bad decision for me. Once again, publicly saying this. So at the time on the podcast, when she brought Will on, it was pretty unapologetic it was kind of like yeah and i'll do it again too <laughs> all right, that's, right that's why dude was crying on the podcast like the man's literally crying in front of america mm -hmm. and especially like you know you you have people tuning into the podcast who has never watched a single episode simply because they know the drama so of course they would want to see jada talk to will mm -hmm. once again how can how can you machete the balls off of a man 
in one fell swoop. Like you have him go through all this. He goes to the Oscars. A comedian tells a joke about you. He laughs. You give him a look and he feels so desperate for your approval that he walks up and slaps another celebrity and goes absolutely like too far, bro. Like, yes, defend your wife. I understand. But also at the same time, hmm, I don't think that was very tasteful. Um, and then after that, she still doesn't defend you. Cause in the wake of that Oscars incident, Jada's like, he was wrong for that. You egged him on. <laughs> like it's, it's absolutely ridiculous the way that this is playing out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's all about narrative. Right. So w- women are the victim by default, by default. And men are the perpetrators and abusers by default, by default. Right. No nuance. Correct. Which is why Will Smith is banned from the Oscars for 10 years. He had to hand back his award. <laughs> like he's getting punished for being egged on by his wife to defend her. Strange. Johnny Depp is not looking. Well, his whole career was, he was out of Pirates of the Caribbean. He was out of the movie. Correct. And just, yeah, his whole c- career was destroyed off uh, of allegations. Off of allegations. Which where, ended up mostly being not true. Correct. Granted, the, the dude's like, you know, got, he, he's done more lines <laughs> Than Mick Jagger and Keith Richards combined. <laughs> All right. He's done more lines than both of them. And that's, that's a lot of lines, but still, um, the allegations were mostly false. And just based on those allegations alone, he lost deals. He lost everything. He's probably not going to work again. I think he well, uh, it depends prob- on how this case goes. Right. But still, you know, a, a lot of, A lot of mud is being tracked up and it's it's not going to look good in the aftermath, of course, but you know, the, the man's literally talking about physical abuse, um, psychological abuse, defamation, a whole bunch of stuff that is going to be really hard to recover from. Right. Well, and she can't have empathy towards males. So impossible. Like his feelings don't matter. He has a feeling. What are those? <laughs> no tiene feelings. <laughs> None. So what do you make of all that? The, the message that is <laughs> unfortunately being said to me is that like, if, if males display emotion, you're done for. Like you got to be the hardest dude on the street at any given time because anytime that I'm talking about the double standard. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What do you make of that? And that's, that's really it. Like as, as a man, you cannot show any emotion and as a woman you are. Well, that I understand because you know, um, but it seems to be weaponized. Sure. So let's first talk about how, why I understand that I men are evolutionarily rewarded for strength and women are not women are are rewarded evolutionary for agreeableness which means nurturing qualities Mm -hmm. so it's that's a paradigm that you can't change and then on top of that but now we're talking about a cultural situation and whenever you talk about culture you talk about manipulation and using language and tactics to achieve a desirable goal well, that goes back That's to politics. That goes back to what you were saying before, where it's once again, men understand that like innately men understand innately that women should be protected and women agree with women. So by default, the female narrative is going to carry quite a bit of weight just because of the way that things are programmed. You know what I mean? So in a situation like this, even, even still, I mean, we're talking about 
and we can even we can even throw a little bit of Kanye into the mix, even if Kanye is a little crazy. But you know, it's the same thing. You show emotion, yeah, you, you lose everything. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it's you show emotion, you lose everything, but um, maybe the things that happen to you that make you snap are will never be considered. So I think that's that's the part that I'll lean into with you. Mm-hmm. So sure. like, I think like there's parts of the uh, culture that are trying to move towards men being able to show more emotions, which is kind of funny because it's like. Are you sure? Because when they do, (laughs) or, you know, it's never really understood. Like, I think women are given a lot more leeway when they're emotional, Sure, right? They're given passes. Oh, you know, like, it's like almost normal when a woman is emotional and it's when a guy's abnormal, uh, it's abnormal when a guy shows emotion. So we never really ask what, it took for him to get there. Oh, it's not important, is it? Because he just shouldn't do it in the first place. <laughs> like mm-hmm. acting out of frame is punishable by default. Like the second that that it's out of pocket, that's you could take whatever punitive measures that you need to to get him back in line. <laughs> Um, well, the thing of it is that a guy should be in control of his emotions. Like there's more, there's more of a risk to a man who loses his temper Sure. because when that fist goes flying, someone might be dying. And when a woman throws a, her fist, you might get a black eye or a red cheek, <laughs> but if you know what I mean? So the, sure. Yeah, so violence and anger for men are always something that um, men have a important, you know, it's more important. The society puts more pressure on men to keep it cool, calm, collected, right? That's, we must consider that more alpha when right. a guy is more in control. Well, meanwhile, the dude who's like losing his temper because, you know, Boston lost and <laughs> sets a car on fire is uh not really manly right a guy who's like or even when boston wins and he sets a car on fire <laughs> same, same exact <laughs> emotional ass dude that's an emotional ass. he's just passionate <laughs> you know so but i think the issue really then becomes right because that's the standard for men sure we all agree that that's like a evolutionarily important thing but then what do you do in a society where I think women are kind of politicizing that dynamic? Because that, to me, there's like inherent dynamics that are at play, especially on the, that like biological evolutionarily, that level. Because that's like the deep down stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not always on the surface. It's the deep, deep down and when when women are using that in society to their advantage to almost like manipulate the system in their favor that's when it becomes a problem especially because you have cultural uh so cultural norms set into place that kind of do that by default too mm-hmm. so that's not really a justice system, right? You, you, you weigh one side against the other, right? That whole thing. That scale is never going to be level. Exactly. And I think there's the reason why you have courts that use evidence and the way that courts work in any kind of civilized society is so that you're not burdened by things like emotion. You're not burdened by narrative or convenient facts so it's pretty wild to see the power of culture man because culture can definitely sway heavily in the direction of courts it's like to me that's the part of of us that's more animal than man Mm -hmm. like the passions and just the image right just seeing the image of a woman look vulnerable 
it, it really it's is visceral. It's way more visceral because Amber Heard just saying, just pouting. She just pouty pouted. And that was enough to convict this man. And now his whole career may be destroyed. And yet secretly he was in many ways also the, the victim. victim. Right. Right. Maybe the victim, you know, from what it sounds like. Yeah, bro. It's wild, man. And I think well done women. You've done it. You, you've you've gotten to the mountain top. <laughs> now what? You've gotten to the mountain top of oppression. If you can swing courts in your favor, well done. I even think like that exists with race to some degree. If you can massacre people with a car and that's just wiped off the news, if you could bomb a much, uh, excuse me, shoot a bunch of people in the New York subways and that's just wiped off the front news. Good job, black dudes. Y'all made it. Is OJ Simpson in this every day? <laughs> I think the tables have turned because they really tried to lynch that, um, that Rittenhouse kid. Mm -hmm. Even though he did nothing for the most part wrong because they definitely tried to kill him before he even shot a single bullet. Right. I saw the evidence. That's the part. Like he actually had his gun there, which is guess what? L legal. legal in America, in Cuba. Sorry. <laughs> Where they take straight to jail. <laughs> this ain't Cuba. All right. Or then, or the sandy dunes of Afghani. Not, not, not that bro. So, you know, they, they, they attacked him first and he popped off because it's you against me, bro. I ain't choosing you. And he just, he, he actually tried to flee. Like he was trying to yeah. leave the situation. He warned them, but then they still came up on him swinging skates, skateboards or whatever. And, and one guy even had a gun. Yeah, exactly that part. So self-defense the media from lebron everybody saying oh the double standards uh it's like <laughs> people some people it's the year is 2022 but in the mind it's not to some people culturally so we sometimes we culture is a weird thing to me man it's like it swings everyone has a perception of culture that's different and it can be based in any time period so you out here like with wooden teeth in your head and with <laughs> <laughs> to you in 1792 give me that rum slave <laughs> <laughs> give me your wife and your bay leaf <laughs> just one <laughs> one just one leaf <laughs> one leaf and genocide <laughs> i'm gonna kill you yeah man <laughs> why, why was that so flippantly said like, i'm gonna kill you <laughs> Yeah, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, you're probably dead too. They were definitely that casual about it. Mm -hmm. That he didn't even want to do it. He was. He just was like, nah. I, I, "I'm gonna kill you." <laughs> and and you too. Yeah. But yeah, man, that's that's really what I'm trying to get at is whether, whether it's like race is a, its own nuanced complexity and we can exclude that and just stick to gender. Gender is a fascinating thing because it's really, really caught up in so much of like this political force, like the women's March really kicked it off, but it's fascinating and we can get to um, maybe problems it's created, but yeah, I won't even touch dysphoria yet. Maybe. That's where my head was going to. Actually, I don't go that way. I won't touch it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Get those chromosomes don't lie. Hey, <laughs> I'm here all night. Hey. Bada booey. <laughs> Gabagoo. I'm a Gabagoo from Jersey. All right. These are the kind of jokes you're going to hear from Jersey. 
<laughs> Thanks for coming to the sh- I don't even know this casino. It's a clearly it's got to be a casino. It's got to be a casino, and it's the free comedy show. Yeah, it's the free one. It's definitely not the diamond. Do club. not eat the crawfish. <laughs> don't even don't do don't it. Ew. Even think about it, because that crawfish definitely came from underneath the boardwalk. Uh, it's got three eyes. <laughs> Five claws. <laughs> <laughs> it's like extra meaty crawfish. It's like my meat's it get- on them feet. <laughs> <laughs> my meat's on them feet. <laughs> no, nah, I'm not even gonna touch dysphoria. Let's so let's just keep focusing on what has this power, like the need for this paradigm shift came from pain there's a lot of genuine pain that right in the women's march and all that and i think plenty valid there's many Absolutely. women who were sure. abused in the world but I, I think we sometimes when you you have something like passionate that electrifies your heart and your mind you lose sight of reality because we forget that all almost all the women on earth have not been abused for all the women that I would say millions of millions of women abused. We're talking about billions of women who are not abused. The world is a big place. Um, yeah. And I also think that's why we had to reinterpret normal things as abuse. It's an overcorrection. All things are overcorrection when they come from pain, right? It's appeasement. It's, uh, It is like a mini death. You want like the mini death experience, uh, exaltion, Uh, all things that are exalted by exaltion. Exaltion is the great equalizer. And I think pain, there's a part of pain that just wants it all to go away. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that type of release pain desires. ah. And when that gets out into society, wavy, that's why things got swervy, like that purple cough syrup. <laughs> you had too many and the road got started so going. <laughs> right? You're driving. Bro, I'm driving straight, right? Nah, nah bro. man. You diagnose. <laughs> As all get out, bro. Yeah, the car is in the moon. <laughs> it's driving off into the it's sun. Like, bro, I don't even know how you made it go up. <laughs> but you, you're driving up. Talking to the moon. <sighs> yeah you you swerve and it's like society got swervy man that pain i think slowly started to chip away at some people's consciousness you had men who felt that they had to either adopt female frames right because their presence their power their masculinity was by default being held to the standard of abused women, right? Because normal, healthy women, women who desire polarity, they don't want themselves. They want the other. Correct. They were like, yeah, yeah, shut up, shut up. You, you, shh. You, how are you raped? When, how, when? Okay, what are your thoughts? Let's mainstream the abused, right? And, and I think it came from a good place because... Y- logically you would think let's hear the uh, the oppressed right let's let's we've spoken about this there's a danger in that because it's good to absolve the oppressed needs right all oppressed people need healing but then when you identify with the pain and it's not it, you don't move on past your pain bro victim mindset and then it turns into it turns into that yeah it's the victim, identity of the victim victim mindset and also to a certain extent pain olympics like who's the most hurt it turns into right because then identity is turned into a social a social hierarchy 
the, like the soul it's like everything becomes upside down like strength is no longer the virtue and now pain becomes the virtue yeah and i think as a society we need to break that paradigm and heal the pain and move on from the pain to reverse the polarity and bring back strength and that comes from women you know doing that that women need to do that and i think the more women who heal themselves from many of these traumas, which I think is, has, and is happening. It's, it's because you see many women who were part of that, like paradigm. They hated men. They hated this. They hated right. Driven by pain, pain, hatred, fear. How many of those women are, are, are like, you know what? That's not me anymore. You see them out there on social it's, media. It's out there, right? Women who was like, I was a former feminist. If I can, if I can have five kids now, you can too, right? That's that. That's the little the comeback. I think. I think the genie is out of the bottle, mm -hmm. and people are waking up from the lullaby of pain. Definitely. And Definitely. thank you. Quicker, please. <laughs> like. Please. We got a lot of work to do, so let's keep going, bro. Let's keep going. So you have, so you have that all happening, right? But then let's talk about what it did to men, because I bro already brought up how men. What happened to men during this time period? Men, by de facto, just in their masculine, were were shouted down, were were called perpetrators, for were sure. punished. Some were just straight up punished and abused verbally and, and, and really like it, abusive behavior, but we would never call it that. Cause it's like, Oh, you're a man. You can deal with this. Exactly. It's like, you shut up, you know, you're, you're bro, you're toxic, bro. You know? <laughs> and I'm talking about good dudes, good dudes. You could see how big their hearts are, but they're just naturally in their masculine. They talk a lot. They, you know what I mean? They're firing off. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, no. just, it's that they, they, in their own good nature, were swept up like anyone in society to this tumultuous sea of female pain. And many dudes got abused. Many dudes. Right? In that cycle. And no, I don't think they deserve it. Because a good guy who's never done something wrong does not need to be emotionally abused and gaslit. That's not the way that you create healthier men. Harmony, right. You don't do that. Like the nuance wasn't there. You you know, no man should be guilty by default. It's ham fisted. And yeah, it's, and it's, it's abusive. Really? It's abusive. We wouldn't call it that. Cause again, feelings, what are those for men? <laughs> no, not for you. Nada. So, you know, a lot of dudes got swept up into that. And what happened? What did it cause? Yes, dysphoria. Dysphoria? Simp culture? Uh, simps. Simp culture. Oh, my God. Incels, right? Because then beyond, beyond desiring women but not being able to ever access women, right? Because, uh, right? Because of the pedestalization. You know what I mean? They, Where it's just like okay, I don't even know what to do because everything I do is toxic by default, so I just will stay in my corner. Yeah. <laughs> if you get kicked in the face enough, you start to give up. And then what happens? Then you become the incel. The hatred of women would set in for a lot of these dudes, right? Which isn't cool either, which I never promote either. Is The incel is the, the, the phase of the good guy who got abused and now hates women and is resentful. Mm -hmm. And then that he just brews and brews and brews. And maybe he pays for hookers and stuff. Women become objects to him eventually. Mm -hmm. And maybe he can, might get into red pill culture. And, and take, he may be abusive too. And by, then by become, proxy. Yeah, become abusive eventually because eventually he says, what is the value of goodness if it gets you nothing? So we literally are creating abusers through this cultural cycle. Right. We've winded up then perpetuating the same harms that we were trying to get rid of. So this is the power of culture and why we need to always have more nuance in our culture and conversation. This course, freedom of speech. That's the power of freedom of speech. And, you know, we're not going to cover Elon, 
But that's right. That's where the root of this thing is about. You and can't censor everything. You can't, you can't baby proof reality. And nuance can't exist without discourse and freedom of information and freedom of com- conversation. Right. And I think that's what truly abusers are afraid of. The people who are the most abusive on Twitter right who cloak themselves in blue check marks who cloak themselves in blm hashtags and every rainbow of the skittle Mm -hmm. skittle bag on their you know their twitter headline you know the the people the virtue the biggest virtue signalers right those are the people who are out there saying you guilty by default you white proudly you white proudly jump off a cliff you 90% 90% black and not the full 100? <laughs> jump off a cliff. Jump off a smaller cliff. Equity. <laughs> Equity. Equity. T- t- 10% shorter cliff. <laughs> <laughs> For your 10% whiteness. Can we get the AC on, bro? I'm steaming. Yeah, it's... Uh, sorry, folks. It just got... Cause you talk, we talking I think because we had hot, hot wings for the game tonight. Uh, I'm starting to feel that hot wing sweat on the back of my neck. <laughs> oh, you getting that <laughs> that big black guy sweat <laughs> on the back of the neck? You're getting that Been glitch. Been the most of my life. <laughs> it's really funny that that's life. always like if I think if you ask if, if, you, if you ask anyone who was born in our age range and you ask them sweaty black guy gangsta's paradise is the first thing that comes to mind because that dude was sweating first off the smoke that was in the video wasn't from a fog machine that was from him (laughs) (laughs) he was he was sublimating the sweat that's how hot he was (laughs) tell me what age you are without telling me age you are been standing (laughs) motion but yeah man you know I think that's really what I'm trying to get at is like, so the result in men is you have the, the simp cycle turns into the incel cycle. And we basically perpetuate the same uh, type of caricatures and uh, psychological personas, albeit new labels. Sure. Same old, same old. I think the good news is, is that, you know, out of this really thick movement, I, it's so dense, bro. This thing has reached every fabric of society worldwide. That's how thick it is. And I think that kind of stuff happens quicker because of the internet. Speed, speed of information. Speed of light, bro. This this type of ideolo- ideological thinking. Uh, I would say some cultures are more impervious to it, right? Because you, right. Know, you ain't seen no Russian dude with a tree trunk. <laughs> of a dong <laughs> messing with, with with the baby status and this dude's out here eating glass and i, I and taking I, taking things down unless if they migrated to somewhere in the west i also don't see any habibis doing it it's a western thing for sure because western societies are the most safest and geared towards female agency correct no other societies on earth prioritize and create gynocentrism in the way the West does. So of course, because we have egalitarian values and ideals. So naturally it would affect the West. Yes. And let's really keep diagnosing that because right. You get dudes that wind up becoming like that, but it's sometimes I want to talk about just the nuance dude Cause like, if you're not in that extremist, if if you didn't get swallowed into the sea by the sirens, Mm -hmm. the sirens, Mm -hmm. the sirens, Mm -hmm. you got to flap, flap with me. The sirens (laughs) into the water. There we go. She had double D's. (laughs) (laughs) That's the last thing you say. <laughs> no. Oh. Wow. Trip trip. There, there it is. That was good. 
<laughs> you got swallowed by that siren. And so uh, excluding those dudes, though, just the general husk, right? That huskness of dudes where you got dudes, you know, they're probably, I mean, think about all the things that you got that like very sick veganism culture that got co-opted by eugenicists. So you got dudes who aren't getting any testosterone. Right. Then they're right. There's phthalates. Then there, is it phthalates or phthalates? Phthalates. Phthalates. This PT. It's this dude PT. French. <laughs> <laughs> phthalates. <laughs> this dude is deaf and French. <laughs> phthalate. <laughs> phthalates. <laughs> Toilet. My name is Toilets. My name is Tammy. <laughs> you Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> I'm not. Let me see. <laughs> soy and everything. Right. You got soy. Literally, if you go to Whole Foods, read the ingredient list on any product. You be, you be out here eating sunflower seeds. Soy. You out here eating cauliflower. Soy. soy it's just like why is there soy in this so yes you there's a barely, chemical right you can barely get water without getting soy in it in I fact mean, you get a lot more in water water's even <laughs> crazier in some regions but that that you know that's what i'm getting at bro just the general huskness so you got that not sunning your balls you ain't sunning them nothing <laughs> you got almonds no <laughs> Freaking almonds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> almond milk. Mm -hmm. Almond what? milk. You get that silk milk? <laughs> Getting them. So you got this chemical warfare going on against men, right? You have an ideological warfare going on with men, right? Where they're basically damned if they do, damned if they don't. Right? Then you got the carcel system. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then you have all the double standards of the law. That's what I'm getting at. That, mm -hmm. Like Johnny Depp is basically in the carceral system right now. He's being punished and he was held guilty before he had a trial. Literally, there's <laughs> it's guilty before innocent off of hearsay. Yeah. Guilty before innocent, bro. So you have all these things that are working against dudes. And then the average dating pool of women is becoming really has less to offer for for men right you got women who are basically chasing careers over being with a dude long term right and you have dudes who may not even really be getting anything out of a girl who knows a lot about how to hydroponic grow things and deal with algae she knows everything about algae, but she don't know how to cook no Cinnabon. <laughs> <laughs> you mean crock pot? <laughs> she ain't crocking that pot. No. She ain't crocking no, that pot. No crock pot. <laughs> and, and, and besides cooking, like general disagreeableness, general resentment, general holding you to double standards and not being nurturing emotionally available being feminine really being, that part you it's, know it's the and, emotional and providing yeah and, and and honestly that i i think that that's like a real weighty part of it emotional availability if by yeah. default you as a woman harbor some resentment towards men by default cuz men are always wrong how can you possibly be emotionally available to them if they, if they ever try to approach you you are if, if you walk up to someone holding a shield and more than the approach guys who will do everything for you and want that but can't get through your exoskeleton guys who want because there's it's not even the approach bro there's dudes out there who want to give women that who don't get it in return so they don't really see the point of going through all that right all the all that pain and torture and and to get what right it's not worth it and that why do you think the rates of marriages are dropping why do you think 
the uh, you know uh, male fertility and female fertility is dropping. Granted, the chemical stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, why do you think that uh, there are more single women right now in history more than more than ever? More more single women and men in history, and the birth rate for the first time in history is not outpacing or matching the death rate sure yeah. more people are dying than children are being born we're in children of the men children of men the movie <laughs> right what's his name <laughs> that i don't know clive owens children of men get your cake up incredible movie dystopian movie watch it it basically was it t- over a decade ago at least came out hmm. predicted that there will be one last woman on earth who can give birth. They call the children of men because mm. all the men on earth were infertile. <laughs> it's a dystopian movie. Watch that, bro. That's it's wild. Terrifying. Clive Owens is British cat. He's like, you know, they're kind of like that, that dude <laughs> in the movies. Um, yeah, man, you know, we need to definitely turn the ship around and, and I do see it on the, you know, there's always outskirts, but I, it's like, come on. I don't want it to be that just some chicks on Twitter and some dudes on Twitter are like, you know what I mean? Out there promoting X, Y, Z. We need probably more mainstream voices out there. <laughs> and, and we're the, really what we're seeing in the culture war is going to be like abusers who use labels who are going to fight tooth and nail against anything reasonable, moderate, because they lose power when they lose narratives. The, the whole Twitter fight is just another, uh, it's like a blip in the matrix of the culture war mm-hmm. of everything that, uh, you know, you and I have discussed here on this episode. That whole Twitter thing is just a reflection of all of these these cultural wars. Like there's people who are hiding in the labels of progressivism who are like mostly abused, formerly abused people. It's like mental trauma. It's psychological disorders, uh, personality disorders, right? all tumultuously dealing with their pain within like wanting societal approval and getting the clout and getting power and getting equitable like positions and big corporations. And then, you know, you find out that they're like a POS (laughs) secretly like Joy (laughs) Reid and all the other like, you know, Hillary insiders and, you know, Talcum X, you know, you got all these people who are out here like really, really being toxic and they are going to fight tooth and nail against anything healthy, moderate, gives power to both sides, gives health and agency and some modicum of reason. Civility, discourse, and balance that's the decorum. is not the goal. Yeah, that's the, screw the decorum. They, that's why they don't operate with that decorum. That whole math student that was the smartest kid who's ever lived, mm-hmm. clearly. Mm-hmm. Like, there's the no one else. Basically, <laughs> Einstein, <laughs> if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd gladly be the first to say, basically, Einstein, that boy. 500 IQ. 520. <laughs> if that ain't a thing, it is now. So, you know, you got the record see the way that he spoke they don't use decorum no he was talking over he was no but it's political warfare those are the tactics that these people use and think about all the if you've been even just reading into what libs have been saying on twitter these are the people who perpetuate some of the sickest things in society and I'm not saying that they're evil, but they're definitely, these people are rife with psychological, emotional problems, probably formal abuse victims, pro- you know, whatever it is, but it gives you no excuse to perpetuate, you know, power in, you know, for the sake of power, because, you know, you, you want to spin that wheel. Right. Like th- wh- for, that's why, messed up. Why are you gaining power just to penalize? Yeah, that's, it's like 
It's like you just want to be in charge of the, you want to be warden of a prison. Right. You don't want to get rid of the prison. But we're out here saying, yo, no prison for, you know, healthy, non violent criminals. You know, like, actually, there's already laws for violent criminals. So we can put those people in jail. Mm hmm. But the, everybody else doesn't belong in jail. No one's guilty before, you know, evidence being seen, right? But what if the jail is society? That's what it is. They want society <laughs> to be jail for people, whether they have committed crimes or not. It's just simply, it's like, just they want to be the wardens of society. The only people who are allowed to not be in jail are the people who are crying the loudest only. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you are, have been abused, let's say, or you've gone through things and you're not uh, careful, you can start fighting those monsters. And it's the whole Nietzsche quote, those be careful, those who fight monsters that they not become them. Sure. Right. Yep. And I think that's really the situation, bro. That's what it is. You got people fighting monsters. Look at that mirror. Mm hmm. He's a monster. I mean, Taylor Ryan's the way that she docks libs of TikTok and did committed the same exact abusive behavior that supposedly happened to her. That is that not the epitome of what I'm saying? Do these facts don't have wings? Protect the <laughs> press, yet I'm gonna roll up on your front lawn, your family's doorsteps, like for real. Like, Sheesh. That's what I'm saying is that these people who may have been abused, I say that because that is super important. It's valid. It, it's, it's usually them, right? The white knights, I'm going to save society and people. In some way, they've been harmed. There's other, you know, there's people who may not have been, they've been super privileged and they've learned of historical harms and they, they put on the white cape. They're just as bad. Because if you're being abusive and you think you're the white knight, look in the mirror. Because <laughs> you're acting abusive. And fire, last I checked, does not put out fires. <laughs> no. <laughs> We've learned, you've learned people out there, nothing from MLK. Didn't he say only the light can do that? The only thing that people remember from MLK is I have a dream. There's no, other, that. there's no other lessons to learn. Right. <laughs> well, that's it for this episode of the Masses Podcast. I believe this is episode 23. 21 did not air. Every Friday on YouTube, we are dropping on Spotify and iTunes. Mm, 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 mm. You ready for that? Ready to just hear us instead of looking at our beautiful faces? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> now he's just now he's just damning. You got him in the pocket now. <laughs> He's bringing out that Enrique. <laughs> I can eat your hero, baby. I can eat your hero, baby. <laughs> Catch new episodes of the Masses Podcast right here on YouTube. And be sure to support our Patreon. And catch us at Masses Podcast on IG, where you can find our clips and shorts. The Masses. The Masses.